Game number two of the night just about to tip off between the Webster Gorlocks and Eureka College. This time the guys edition of this matchup. Spencer Davis, Kareem Burnett joining you for this one as well. Kareem, ladies unable to pick up a W first time for the, or this first game of the night. But guys looking to get some revenge for them. And also trying to get back into the win column, especially looking for their first win in the slide this season. Yes, I'm very excited. I feel like I haven't been at a home game in a while, so I'm very excited here for some Eureka College Red Devils basketball. As you mentioned, the girls weren't able to get the win, but I'm expecting the guys to come out and try to improve on that. Last time we saw these guys was on the road against Blackburn on Saturday. It was a game that they lost by 11. Kareem only scoring 62 points as a team, and 49 of them came from Cody Bear and Pee Wee Brown. So Kareem, you got to find some other production, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's that's one thing we've kind of been roping on all season, you know. Not something I can't want to keep saying, but it's kind of obvious. As you said, only 11 points not scored by Pee Wee Brown or Cody Bear. Nobody else on the team scored more than five points or attempted more than five field goals. As you mentioned, both of these guys, 20 field goals shot between them a piece. And Pee Wee Brown shot 11 free throws, so he really attempted somewhere upwards of maybe around 30 field goal attempts. And, you know, that's kind of one of my big things, take some pressure off Pee Wee Brown. It's like every game we see him banged up or banged up because he's our defensive stopper and he's our guy. We look to go get us a bucket, so we're going to have to take some pressure off him on both sides of the floor. Yeah, Pee Wee Brown had a great game again, 24 or 25 points, nothing to scoff at, a few steals as well. But like you said, we talked about it. It was kind of a game of two halves. The Red Devils looked really strong in that first half. But for a lot of that second half, they were down by six points from eight or so minutes and just couldn't break through that ceiling. Yeah, in a game against Webster, if they're in that situation, what do they have to do to get through that? Yeah, as we just seen with um, the, the Webster's female team, they just never let up. In a game like, game like this, you don't want to start down. They have to, you know, fight uphill. And that's another point I wanted to mention. You mentioned how good we were in the first half. I mean, I have to say the same thing about Cody Bear. He had an excellent first half, and then in the third quarter, it seemed like he didn't really touch the ball at all. Again, he ended the night shooting 20 shots, but I mean, I think that doesn't tell the whole story. So we're going to need two consistent halves from both from, from him. Jalen Johnson stepping up a little bit as well, two of three from the field, and he was one of the guys that we've been looking at to kind of increase his workload offensively. He started to settle in. The offense starting to flow well. But on this Webster side, again, they come under the season. They lost Win Brown Jr., an all-region guy who joined all-region with Cody Bear last year. Win Brown, no Win Brown, and nobody in double-digit scoring for Webster this year. So it's been kind of a by-committee type performance. Nate Jones comes into this one as their leading scorer, about nine per game. He's off of a 16-point game, though, against Westminster. Yeah, almost a polar opposite to our team, as you mentioned. No one in um, even average double digits where we got the two top heavy guys, Cody Bear and Pee Wee Brown, two all-conference members, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. So that's going to go back to my other point from earlier. We're going to need to be locked in, not only as a team on the offensive side of the ball, but defensively. A lot of games we played, I think it was in the Aurora game and the um, Dominican game where we had guys on fire and we're like, you know, Pee Wee Brown go put the fire out. And then the other guy started getting back hot. So we're going to need our team to, you know, come together and everyone key in and lock in defensively. Well, that's all we have for you on the pregame side of things on the other side. Starting lineups, first half action, Webster Eureka on ECTV. It affects all corners uh, of the world for good. I mean, if you think about organizations that affect an entire world, it's a short list. Taking care of kids, kids is a priority. Taking care of the families as whole. Without donations, without people that care for St. Jude and for the kids mm. in St. Jude, our match wouldn't be here. You are making a difference, not just in the hospital, but in the entire world. When people ask us who we are, we tell them we're problem solvers, opportunity creators, community builders, and change makers. We are Rotary. Around the world, our network of 1.4 million neighbors, friends, and leaders volunteer their skills, expertise, and resources to solve issues and address community needs. We are people of action. Join us, and together, we can make an even greater impact. Find out how you can get involved at rotary.org slash action. What would 
would you give for a child you loved to make their wish come true? To help them fight a critical illness? Just imagine what you'd do. Every single one of us can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Chris Bunch and assisted by William Manning, Mike Senior, George Little, and Javane Nugent. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for your Eureka Red Devils! A 6'4 sophomore from Morton, Illinois, number 4, Ben Carter! And a 6'2 junior from Peoria, Illinois, number 10, Pee Wee Brown! And a 6'0 junior from Rock Falls, Illinois, number 11, Jalen Johnson and a 6'3 junior from Delaware, number 40, Sam DeJesus and a 6'10 senior from Peoria, Illinois, number 24, Cody Bayer. The Red Devils are coached by Chip Wilde and assisted by Jessica Thorman, Jake Boyd, and managed by Zoe Wilde. And there you have it, Eureka's starting lineups and a real quick rundown of the Webster Gorlocks. Jason Coleman, number three, number 11, Jamar Sykes, the second, number 15, Nate Jones, number 22, Marcus Becton, and number 23, Josh Luster for the visiting Gorlocks. Similar starting lineup to what you we're used to with the Red Devils, although there is a new entry with Sam DeJesus rejoining the starting lineup. It's been kind of a mix. We'll see DeJesus start some games, and then another time we'll see a guy like Noah Persich starting. Yeah, as physical as Blackburn last week was, I'm surprised that Sam DeJesus didn't start in that game. Bear will win the tip. Hopefully that's the first win of many for the Red Devil men today. Johnson getting a screen from Bear. DeJesus setting a screen for him. Able to shake his man in an easy bucket over Nate Jones. Ready to use his side. Something to note, Kareem, I do not see Noah Persich on the bench. I don't know what's going on with that. Again, with finals week, maybe there was some sort of conflict that they couldn't get around with tests, but something to monitor, having uh, one less senior veteran out there. Jones flipping back out. Coleman up top. Sykes the second, left short. And Cody Bear with his first rebound of the night. Ben Carter. First time on the ball for him tonight, Johnson. Pass deflected out of bounds. Johnson looks to be in a little bit of discomfort here near half court. Uh, I think he's reaching at his ankle. I thought they originally bumped knees, but he reached down at his ankle. Could have been something different. Yeah, it looks like Johnson's wearing an ankle brace. Maybe just adjusting the laces on that. A little pick and pop here with Bear. Looking to get a screen again. Shaking Jones for a moment. Tough shot. Bear to Hazer scrapping for it. Carter with a rebound. Carter, mid-range jump shot, out. Jones rebounds. In and out move from Beckton, trying to back down Carter. Gets by him, nice move and footwork. That was a great move, give, give Carter in the air right there. 2-2, two, two, minute and a half into this one. The post touches, a heavy diet on both sides. Yeah, we've seen both teams score their first two points off post. Cody Bear again at the top of the key. Brown handing off Carter. Hayes is setting up for a screen. Carter still with it. Brown now. He'll fire from three. That one too strong and rebounded by Luster. Webster a great rebounding team. They'll look to continue that trend in this one. It's with Becton. A lot of backdoor cuts. That one works out. Jones pump fakes. Looks to drive. Ends up floating a pass to the corner. Jones, working on DeJesus, kicks out. Becton, run off of the spot. Three on the shot clock, flips to the corner, tipped out of bounds by Brown. That was, great. 
will have one second to put a shot up. That was great team defense right there. They couldn't even get a shot off. They had a backdoor cut, but Cody Bear's presence, the guy didn't even go up. One second to get a shot up. Coleman to inbound. Cross court picked off by Brown. It's a three on one. Brown taking it himself, lays it up and in. Yeah, Brown coming in like a defensive cornerback and just taking that. Webster gets a turnover quick, an unforced turnover. And you can see Webster was trying to catch Eureka almost in transition. Unfortunately, not able to do so. Very similar to their women's team. Very similar. Those leak out type of plays. You can tell Webster wants to play fast. Fast and physical seems like their MO. Yep. Bear down low once again. Too strong down there. Cody Bear with two quick, smooth post moves in these first three minutes. Jones listed at 6'5. Bear listed at 6'10. He's going to have that height advantage as much as he wants. Five inches of height difference. You can really tell when he's out on the perimeter guarding. Yeah, he, he makes Jones not even look like a 6'5 <laughs> guy. No. Outside, Luster, three pointer up over to Jesus, too strong. Tough offensive rebound and finish there from Sykes. Just off these first three minutes, I can tell Webster has some athletic, aggressive guards as we see him crash the glass on that one. Yeah, it's a little bit different from their women's team in the sense that as Bear shoots a three pointer, and that one no good, rebounded by Becton, in the sense of there was a lot of leaking out being done in transition. It seems like everyone on Webster's guys team is going to crash the boards hard. Johnson gets called for a foul on the floor. Well, we've seen Jalen Johnson several times this season, along with Dylan Logsdon, you know, willing to sacrifice his body and uh, attempt those, those charge calls. Jalen Johnson, to me, has been a very, very underrated defender for the Red Devils so far this season. We've seen multiple guys on multiple teams try to attack him defensively, and it's not worked in their favor. It's Alpha Diallo and Carl Moore Jr. onto the court for the Gorlocks. Moore, the defending defensive player of the year, is blocked by DeJesus. You said Moore was the defensive player of the year? Yeah, last year. Set the slack record for blocks in a year. Holds the school record as well. Quick three taken. Jones the rebound. It's Diallo down low. Moore trying to post up on Carter. Red Devils able to switch out. See Moore wants the ball with the Hazes guarding and three pointer up. No good. Rebounded by Diallo. Worked around. Jones. Awkward shot there. Blocked by Bear. Quick outlet up. Bear versus Jones. Bear had it on his hip and finishes through it. And one. Certainly looked like there was enough contact to warrant a whistle. Officials content to let it play out, though, early on. I'm not mad at that. Two of the more experienced head coaches in the Slack, Coach Wilde in his 17th year, and Coach Bunch in his 22nd with Webster. 22nd, that's my entire life. <laughs> Get a foul on DeJesus away from the ball. They're saying a little bit of a corn dog type of action you're not allowed to do. For those at home, corn dog raising your knee into somebody's backside. Not allowed to do it in the post. I would hope not. <laughs> Sykes up top. Three pointer up there. Tipped out. And bouncing out of bounds. Apologies, that was Sykes taking the three. Coleman swinging. 8 4. Red Devils on top, about five minutes into this. Been a bit of a slow offensive in these first five minutes. Both teams still trying to find their mojo. There's more on the glass. More unable to finish there. Still was not in play. Excuse me. She left it with another missed shot there. And another offensive rebound. Certainly making the most of their time on offense. Extending in as much as they can. Kicked, wing three-pointer up from Diallo, way too strong. Ben Carter will collect. Brown will set up the offense for the Red Devils. Good crossover, trying to shake, has to force a pass once again. That's the second time Brown's went up for a shot and had to kick. I was just going to say that. 
Maybe that's something they've watched in film. He would like that dribble pull up sometimes. Certainly being harassed, Coleman triple team. Brown is a lot of contact, no call. Ball on the floor, dove in. A timeout taken by Webster. Rest are den definitely letting them play today. Two questionable no calls by me. The one on the uh, Cody Bear fast break, and then Pee Wee. He just drove into traffic on that play. Coach Wildy Livid wants to travel. 14 24 left in the first half. 8 4 Red Devils right here on ECTV. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spells. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Four point lead early on for the Red Devils. Back in front of their home fans. One of the few, the last time they'll play in front of their home crowd for a couple weeks. You and can definitely. Also, also part of it is students won't be here next time they play at home. I was just going to say, you can definitely tell it's finals week. Not a ton of people in the crowd. We're used to seeing a lot more people in attendance of these, uh, these home games. Certainly some uh, frayed nerves out there in the student section, to say the least. A little bleary-eyed. Can't blame them. I'm glad to see them showing up, supporting their guys. Carter picks off a pass. Two on one within his right hand. A lot of contact there and can't finish through it. But earning himself two free throws. That was a great... Great athletic move by Ben Carter. I've been speaking on his athleticism all season. Got the steal, took it the whole way to court. Earned himself two free throws. And a tough drive there. You got a guy on your left and right hand. Kind of just have to dribble out in front of you and use your muscle to keep him away. Carter good on his first attempt. And Carter's had a very good season on both sides of the basketball floor. We've been seeing a little um, like backdoor lob play they like to do for him. That's been very effective. They ran it for him twice against Blackburn. The first time he wasn't able to convert, he tried to lay it up, and the second time he dunked it in. Only Carter's sixth and seventh free throws attempted this season. I would say a little surprising considering how much he goes to the basket. Yeah. Beckton able to find... New entry, it's Ugo. Hugo, excuse me, Hugo. Diallo with it at the moment. 2-3 zone, and the Red Devils. Backed into the corner, three-pointer up. Davis knocks one in. Davis shot that with confidence. Unlike me when I shoot from the corner. <laughs> Carter tries to respond, yes! Five-point lead for the Red Devils. And Ben Carter has worked on his game. Last year, I didn't see him hitting or taking this many threes. Because he almost comes up with another steal. The defense was too good. Hugo is flying into the stands. Something rolled out. Landing on someone in the stands. I don't know if he landed on someone as much as... I think the chair broke. No way. <laughs> i definitely seen something flying on the court. Getting the shot clock reset. That was the cause for the pause. Hugo seems to be moving all right. The hard shot, though, into the stands. It was. It's great defensive effort by Carter and Johnson. Johnson miscommunication with Bear there. The 13-02. We talked about it at the Blackburn game. These unforced errors they the Red Devils really need to cut down on. Yeah, things like that. And Spencer, you're absolutely right. That chair did break. I just seen um our soccer coach take it uh take it away. You go able to tip that pass, keep it alive. Three corner from Diallo, too strong again. Hey, I think he's been hitting the weights a little too hard. Man. That just that went way over. Brown picked up by Davis. Brown triple team downstairs. Tried to pass back out. Carter ends up with it. Nice drive to the basket and just doesn't get the roll. Almost a George Gervin scoop. 
Davis on the right side, back to nice jab step, gets the middle, fouled, and will go to the free throw line for two. He had Ben Carter totally lost with that jab. 12-22 left in the first half. Yeah, but you, you just mentioned um, the unforced errors and turnovers. We've seen an unforced turnover with the pass by Jalen Johnson, and then Pee Wee came back with a forced turnover as he lost the ball on that one. Like you said, we can't, we can't do that. Uh, we already have the forced errors and turnovers. You don't want to give teams free stops. Oh, that's a good point. A lot of times, you know, like you're going to turn the ball over in a basketball game. The goal is obviously to keep it under 10, but again, with a very intense defense, you'd like to be just in the flow of basketball making those turnovers and not the free ones, as you just said. Logsdon and Brewer onto the court for the Red Devils. Again, no Noah Persich tonight. We found out when you did. So the Red Devils trying to make do with other senior guard. You know what? Like you said, it might be having something to do with finals. We don't know. For the time being, the Red Devils having to try to hold it down without 12-8 Dylan Logsdon, Huey Brown. Here's the freshman Brewer to Logsdon. Logsdon in the lob, play to Bear, still brings it in more. A couple of really good players guarding each other. Bear wanted the call, didn't get it. Still finishes. The tough bucket by right there. A fading away post hook from the wrong side with your hand. He shot that with the jump hook with his right on the left side. Beckton blocked again. Moore somehow coming up with a layup. And Moore. A little too much elbow on that one. How many offensive fouls do, does Dylan Logsdon draw? <laughs> All of them. All of them, literally. Him and Jalen Johnson. Seems to be kind of a, a market smart in terms of always coming up yes. with drawing one. <laughs> Remember that market smart? He drew the charge on James Harden in a close game against the Rockets a few years ago. One of my like, all-time favorite Celtics memories. I was hyped. It's rare to get that hyped over a charge call, but it was, it was pretty sweet. <laughs> so Brown, yeah, Brewer now, 12 on the shot clock. Logsdon. Bear looking to set a screen for him. Logsdon trying to shake Hugo. Five on the shot clock. Brown pick and roll with Bear. Brown needs to get one up over Becton. Able to do so. Tough shot. And a rebound from Hugo. Becton will push the pace. Trying to get around. Johnson gets trapped instead. Tries to find Hugo. Succeeds. And a foul. I imagine on Cody Bear. I would imagine. Excuse me. On Micah Brewer. Grabbed his arm. Michael Brewer probably going to see a lot of minutes here tonight. Uh, no Noah Persich, as we mentioned earlier. I could also see an uptick in Dylan Logs in the minutes. I imagine Blake Logs will probably see some time as well. It's Jamar Sykes, the second back onto the court. It's Alpha Diallo gets a break. It's always cool to me when people's last names are the second. A violation? Uh, looks like it. Not really sure what happened if someone stepped over the line. Looks like it is a lane violation. That's what the officials tried to explain. Coach Bunch came off the bench in a pretty hot manner, wanted to know what the call was. I believe it, it was Skykes. No, no, no. He shot the free throw. I don't know who. I think it was Sykes. Yeah, okay. It was Sykes who stepped over the line. That's what I thought. At least that's who they motion towards. Yeah. I could be wrong. Logs into Brown. 12 on the shot clock. Another late possession for the Red Devils. Brewer kicks Brown. Three-pointer up. Yes. Boom. Another level of Pee Wee Brown's game that he's tried to add to. That's his second three on the night, correct? I believe so. No, only his first. He's got five points on the night. Ah, uh, correct. But that first three that he... Shot looked good, mm -hmm. and Beckton too strong on that three. A lot of air balls tonight. Yeah, and a lot of, we've seen air balls, we've seen block jump shot attempts. Not your everyday occurrence. You go. Davis into the corner, Beckton. Seven on the shot clock. And jab step two on the shot clock, Sykes. 10 second, or excuse me, shot clock violation probably could have gotten called for a travel as well. 
Is that the second shot clock? Right? We, I mean, we've seen a lot of shots being taken within the last five seconds of the shot clock in this game, and I believe that's the second shot clock violation in this game, or close to it. A timeout by Webster, 17-9. Eureka leading about halfway through the first. Eureka College Basketball on ECTV. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Eight-point lead for the Red Devils. Both teams in the timeout at the moment. Spencer Davis, Kareem Burnett with you, Kareem. So far, so good for the Eureka offense. Yeah, so far, so good for the offense and the defensive side of the ball. I'm always going to preach defense. I've always been a defensive guy. Our offense has definitely been there, but I think our defense has been our call and call all season, and it's been great tonight. I mean, holding Webster to a pace of about 36 points, I mean, obviously that's going to pick up, I would imagine, but still limiting a team to nine points through 10 minutes of action. And we've seen we just got a shot clock, forced a shot clock violation to play before this one. And Webster hasn't been credited with one, but they're forcing Eureka to take shots with about two seconds left on the clock. And you know that's not exactly what the Red Devils are looking for offensively. It's Ray Bands and Muna back onto the court for the first time of the night. Again, one of those guys who's seen upticks in minutes as Blake logs into Bear. Bear in the mid-range. Bear having himself a really good game so far. Yes, sir. He started off hot last game in the first half, and he's repeating that here tonight versus Webster. Lefty fires and knocks it in. He had a, a two-hit jump shot. A lot of coaches preach one motion, but he shot two motions on there, and then still nylon. Josh Luster knocking that one down. Bear to fans of Muna looking to respond, and cannot do so. Blake logs and scrapping for it off the knee. Save. Brewer comes up with it. Blake logs in. Saw Dylan logs in in the corner. Brewer off of one foot. Awkward shot. Fought for it on the ground. Dylan Logson coming up with it. Eureka moving the ball around well. Bear in the post. A little too strong off the backboard. Davis looking to run. Davis takes Brewer straight to the basket. And two shots for the Webster guard. It was a great change of pace. He started off fast. Slowed down for about two seconds to get his defender to stop. He sped back up and drew the foul. And Pee Wee Brown getting ready to check back in. <laughs> Webster having some shooting struggles. It's not all the time that you see uh, crowds behind the court, mm -hmm. or behind the hoop at the D3 level, so maybe that's playing into this. I'm not quite sure. We know we saw it at Eastern. Our guys really struggled with the depth yeah, perception. Literally. That's, that's one thing we were talking about it um, before the game at Blackburn. That's one thing that isn't really talked about enough in basketball, like the arenas that you play in. That's the same size court, same size hoop everywhere, but some arenas certainly feel a lot larger or a lot smaller depending on where you're at. Blackburn yeah. felt really small. Yeah. De Jesus able to find Brown. Tough shot from Brown. That one rattles out. Looked like that might have been close to the cylinder still. No call. Davis. That was Sykes. Back to Luster. Trying to break this 2-3 zone. Jones can't get it to go. Well, you can tell Webster has done their homework on Pee Wee Brown as Blake Logston draws in. Almost got the scoop two layup. They really contested all of his mid-range jump shots. Jones blocked by Brown! Like he swatted a fly on the window. 19 to 13. Eureka on top. Pee Wee Brown with a great play. Again, might have a slow offensive game right now, but still making an impact. He is. That's, that's the great thing about having a two-way player. When the offense isn't going, they can still impact the game defensively. So we've seen Pee Wee Brown throw that off the glass. Brown trying to go on the offensive end as well, and will do so. 
We did mention he's two ways. He can play both sides. And Davis somehow able to bobble his way forward another five feet. Corner with Davis. Now with Luster, 13 on the shot clock. Sykes able to find Coleman. Nice finish to the left. Pretty strong drive. Okay, we talked about it at the Blackbird game. Huey Brown's got to be the most but least fouled player ever. Literally. He doesn't get a lot of... He, he gets a lot of foul calls, but not as many as he deserves. As he, he drives him every time, it's almost like it's contact. Blake logs in. Tried to poke it to Dylan Kent. Luster on the break. Goes back for Davis. Transition three. No good. Rebounded by Dylan Logsdon. Trying to increase the pace, it seems. To Jesus to Logsdon to Brown. Banzamuna. Going to drive baseline. Has to kick out to Jesus. Left a lot of air on that pass. <laughs> a lot of air. Dylan Logsdon tries to go cross court. Pass tip. Still with Brown. Seven seconds. Banzamuna giving a lot of time at the line. Can't knock it in. And they're going to get Dylan Logsdon on a foul call. He said he pushed him in the back. I don't, didn't see a whole lot of contact beyond him trying to swipe at the ball. Well, that was another great defensive possession by, by Webster as we shot that ball with six seconds on the shot clock. Now they're certainly not making life easy for the guards of Eureka specifically. One of these times where Cody Bear's not out on the court, it's got to come down to somebody else stepping up. Can't just be Pee Wee Brown, unfortunately. Well, these are a lot of minutes we tend to lose. Pee Wee Brown less minutes and Cody Bear less minutes as Dylan Logsdon gets to steal. Logsdon stepping into a three, too strong. Bands of Muna high points it. Trying to avoid a guy on the ground. He's still got it. Triple teamed in the post and fouled. Along on the ground fall, foul, yep, yep. right call. Goes on Hibbert, who just checked into the game, a freshman from Georgia. And Zamuna, he stays strong on that one. Carter back in for Ben Zamuna. Bear back in as well. Logsdon. Six point lead for the Red Devils. 5.57 to go in the first half. Kareem, this feels like the reverse of the Blackburn game in the sense that we're the ones with the six point lead. But it's not really going up, and it's not really going down. No. Brown able to get around Sykes. A lot of contact again. Still isn't getting a call. Throughout the third, no call for Pee Wee Brown. Three-pointer up from Luster. No good. But an offensive rebound. Hibbert to Luster. Into the corner, Jones. Trying to drive right into the brick wall. That's DeJesus. I think Jones might have traveled on that jab stuff. See if he tries it again. Seven on the shot clock. Cross court pass tip. Hibbert, long range three. Spins out offensive rebound. Coleman. Coleman can't finish. Bouncing around. Blake Logsdon comes up with it. And gets tripped. A very, very physical game. A lot of no calls. We've seen some bumping, some shoving. I reckon if it goes both ways, you can't be too upset with it. Yeah. That is true. There is going to come a time when <laughs> Coach Wildy might just <laughs> tip over over there. Yeah. There's not a call. I think a coach, regardless of what they say, they never want calls to go both ways. They oh, always yeah. want them to go their way. Well, that's the thing. I think that's when they're arguing for it to go both ways, so when their team is not getting it. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen a coach complain that they're getting too many calls. Let's even that out, actually. To Jesus to Brown. <laughs> For those interested, fouls sitting at 6-5. to five. Red Devils in front in that as well as the score. Carter into the corner. Three-pointer from the sophomore. Yes! Ben Carter. Knocked down. Ben Carter having a great first half. Seven points for him already. So with Hebert. Down low, Jones. Tried to go up into Jesus and late foul call there. But they will hand it out to Sam DeJesus. Wasn't allowed. Not going to let Nate Jones throw him down. No, I think that was great contest by Sam DeJesus. He was slow on the uh, low man rotation, but he got there enough to prevent the easy two. So even if it's a foul, I took my hat off. Doing his job. That is his second foul. They're going to keep him in. My coach has always said, you got five fouls. You might as well use them. 
based off of our discussions, you were a big proponent of using as many as you could. Oh, yeah, as many as I could all the time. <laughs> I mean, they're there for a reason. They're part of the game. Carl Moore onto the court. Jones missing the free throw and Bear with a good box out. Not all the time we have to see Cody Bear get super technical because he just has a height advantage normally. But yeah. demonstrating he's got the technical tools as well. Carter, kind of a heat check three there. DeJesus forcing a bad collect. Eureka will maintain the ball. No well, Sam DeJesus, he kind of kind is our Grant Williams. He get in there, he's physical, he plays defense, he get on the glass, he does all the little things. Uh, that's one of those things I've got in my notes is Eureka needs to do, to do the dishes. A lot mm -hmm. of those little things that you don't think of all the time, but a box out from your 6'10 guy. I love that phrase, do the dishes. Bear able to bring that in. Triple team down low, blocked by Moore. Quick outlet. Johnson trying to get back on Jones, and Jones, nice finish there. I didn't know Jalen Johnson was that fast. <laughs> Put it in gear. We get a screen from Bear. Bear wrapped up. Not quite sure how that's not a foul. Loft. Three-point shooter firing. No. And Moore with a rebound. Coleman trying to get to the glass. Able to finish around and the foul called. Bear got there a little late and ended up landing on Coleman. A bit slow to get up. I don't know if that was a foul on the shot. I think he fouled him after the shot was already up. Yeah, I think he, I think the foul came from him landing on it more than anything. I don't, is that considered a foul if he already shot the ball? Not quite sure. Free throw knocked in, 24-21, Eureka on top. But Kareem, I think the last time we talked about Eureka needing to score soon, and they have it in that span. Yeah, and those, those, those minutes without Cody Bear, this team kind of caught back up. Brown in the mid-range. His first mid-range jump shot all night. And even on that one, that was heavily contested. And, and I believe that was Sykes the second. He was all under that jumper. Coleman trying to force a foul call. Doesn't get one. Definitely trying to get Cody Bear his second. Two Something. tough finishes by Coleman. Yeah, he's willing to go to war down there. That's for sure. Brown. It's tackled on the sidelines. They'll get a blocking foul. That's the sixth foul on Webster. One more. The Red Devils shoot one-on-one -on -one free throws. Red Devils have forced. Webster's in the bonus already. I was looking at Jason Coleman. I thought he was from Chicago because he did Derrick Rose's free throw routine where he put the ball behind his head. But he's from Memphis, which you know Derrick Rose attended college there, and he currently plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. So maybe some connection there. No, you're a big D. Rose guy. It's Love hard it. not to be. One of my idols growing up. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Three minutes to go. Loft. Head fakes. Looks to drive. Cross court. Carter. Jab step. Get some room. Yes! Ben Carter having himself a half. Tray ball. Tray ball. Tray ball. Doing damage. Three threes from the sophomore. Little two-man game being played. Jones, that was weird. <laughs> Luster, three-pointer up. More offensive rebound. Carter trying to tie up. Just ripping it away. Pass tip. Jones. Nice backdoor cut there from Becton. Tries to get it over Barry. Able to do so, but Loft rebounds. On the Loft with the little bump as he was coming down with a rebound. Lobbed up. Bear just touches it home. Thought we were going to get a super highlight. Still works out. He had me ready for it. <laughs> Eight-point lead for the Red Devils. Now it was down to three a moment ago. Responding well. Heard me talking smack. <laughs> Becton. Into the corner with Sykes the second. He'll try a three-pointer. That one no good. And Moore coming up with another offensive rebound. Just a beast on the glass right now. Nice layup by Luster. Can't finish. And Moore takes that one out of bounds. Almost another rebound by Moore. Carl Moore Jr. He's listed at 6'4", but you know he's a, a heavier set guy and he's athletic. He's playing way above his size as he's battling with the 6'10", Cody Bear. Oh 
Had 75 blocks last year. Again, one defensive player of the year. But again, his calling card, usually on the defensive end, an excellent rebounder, though, as well. Small ball center. Cross court gives Loff a shot. Yes. Lead up to 11 now. Webster just trying to get to halftime. Red Devils passing Texan in his first half from three. Easily their best performance from downtown to date. And what are we up to, five three-pointers in this first half? Sounds right. Becton drives and has to kick. Davis no good. Offensive rebound from Jones. Jones trying to get some space, and he's rewarded with a three-point play. Considering the plays that we've seen near the basket, that's probably the least amount of contact that's gotten a call on yeah. for either team. We've seen both teams be absolutely clobbered and get no calls. Like you said right there, as, as, as low contact as this game has been called, I'm surprised they called that one. Cody Bear probably has gotten away with a couple of fouls I've noticed recently. It's kind of starting to run into people. Yeah. I think, you know, he's being fouled on the other end. He's like, y'all not going to call it, so test my luck. Just like to see him enter halftime with as few fouls as possible. It's Carter trying to get by Becton, lowering the shoulder, floater up through contact. No, tips it out and into the hands of Luster. Could go two for one if they want it. Unlikely, though. Davis to Luster. You can see how they're trying to flash this guy into the high post against the 2-3. Mm -hmm. They'll get Becton cutting the basket, finishes with the left. Red Devils will be able to hold for the last shot if they wish to do so. Offensive offenses, uh, offensive point of attack have been kind of different for both teams. We've, we're up to five threes, but left are getting all their points down low. Five seconds to go, poked away from Brown. Inbound play with 3.3 .3 left. <laughs> Coach Willie saying, how is that not a foul? Yeah, I was going to say Jones, he, he died for that steal head first. Brown taken away from Sykes, looking to get the shot up before, and he misses the layup. Kareem, I don't know if he got that out of his hand to begin with. They were willing to count it. I think they call that smoking the layup. He absolutely blew that play. Six-point lead for the Red Devils at halftime. Kareem, scoring pace has picked up a little bit for Webster as we thought it would, but first half positives for the Red Devils, three-point shooting. They've been not. They've been knocking it down. Ben Carter, he's up to three threes. Jonah Loft hit a three. I forgot who else hit the um the, the fifth three, but I counted five threes. Like you said, I would say this is as polished as our offense has looked it all season, and maybe that can be something we can look forward, look towards for towards the future or whatever. If we're knocking down our threes, that makes the game so much easier. Bear with twelve at halftime. Ben Carter following with ten. We'll have some more stats with you on the other side of this halftime in Eureka. Red Devils leading 34-28. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. Hi there. I'm Sean Sandrock, and I'm a sophomore here at Eureka College, studying political science and history with a pre-law emphasis and music vocal performance. And I'm going to be showing you around campus today. This is Burgess Street, which separates the academic and residential sides of campus. Let's begin our tour here at Dickinson Commons, which is one of our two eating establishments here on campus. It's set up like a food court style, which offers substations, a grill station, pizza, and even a home-cooked meal. We also offer lots of vegan and vegetarian options here on campus. This is Burgess Hall, which houses our social science and business classes. It also contains our professor's offices and student classrooms. Built in 1891, Burgess was originally our library, which since has moved across the street in 1967 to our new library. Did you know, on the third floor of Burgess, we have a new creative design lab, which is designated to all of our art students. This is Malik Library, which has many resources here on Eureka College's campus, including upstairs cubicles, 
the Gammon Room, which is a lounge area, downstairs classrooms, and the Ronald Reagan archives. Did you know that President Reagan is a Eureka College alum? If you can't find your book here in the library, we're fortunate enough to be part of the iShare database, which consists of 90 libraries that will find your book and send it here. You may be wondering what classes are like here at Eureka. We usually have a student population of about 500 students, which allows for a lot of individualized attention in the classrooms. Our student to professor ratio is about 13 to 1, which allows students and professors to really get to know each other. We are now coming up on Venom Binkley on my left and Sanders on my right. Venom Binkley was built in 1917, right at the peak of World War I, and Sanders was added on in 2014, with the use of 100% donations given to the institution. This building was awarded Leadership and Energy Environmental Design, which focuses on Sanders being an eco-friendly structure. These buildings are classified as our math and science halls, which house classrooms, professors' offices, and a few science labs. This is Pritchard Theater, which was built right around the same time as Venom Binkley and was originally our sports complex here on campus. The main floor was the gym and the basement was our swimming pool, where President Ronald Reagan swam as a freshman here on campus. This building is now used for our fine arts classes. Eureka College also played a role in World War II. Enrollment was down due to war efforts and we were looking for a few new ways to bring in some cash. The college found a program where we could house Nazi German prisoners of war here in the United States. So Pritchard Theater became a holding place for prisoners of war where they would walk down the street during the day and work at the canning factory. The building behind me is the chapel, which is a very historical building here on campus. It is home to our music department. Downstairs includes classrooms, professors' offices, and practice rooms. Upstairs you will find McAllister Hall, which is where many students perform today. This is the stage where Ronald Reagan gave his first ever speech on behalf of Eureka College's student body. This is the hall where President Reagan discovered his speaking ability. In his 1982 commencement address, he stated, everything that's been good in my life began here. Our oldest building behind me was built in 1858. Our administration building, Burris Dickinson, includes the President's Office, the Provost's Office, the Business Office, Alumni and Development Office, and some staff and professors' offices. If you look at this side of the building, you may notice some things when we reach the other side. Eureka College was founded in 1855 by a group of abolitionists that belonged to the Disciples of Christ Church. We are still associated with the Disciples of Christ Church, but we are now a multi-faith campus and we welcome all here. Did you know that we were the first institution in Illinois and the third in the nation to admit men and women at an equal basis. Now if you look at the opposite side of the building, besides the fire escape, you will notice that both sides are exactly the same. This building was here before the town of Eureka had even been established, so they didn't know which way the town was going to expand. So they decided to create two front entrances. This is the Ronald Reagan Peace Garden, dedicated to the life and legacy of President Ronald Wilson Reagan. You will see here a bust of President Reagan, as well as a significantly large piece of the Berlin Wall, which commemorates President Reagan challenging Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. The garden is a great place to chill out and enjoy the outdoor environment here on campus. Eureka College is the smallest institution to graduate a United States president, which goes to show that all students at Eureka can dream big and fulfill them. We're now looking at the Surf Center, where there are many resources useful for everyone, especially incoming students. This is the Ronald Reagan Museum, which holds over 10,000 artifacts of President Reagan's life here at Eureka. Some were even hand-selected by Reagan himself. The Surf Center also includes the Career Service Center, Becker Auditorium, the Office of Student Life, and our college bookstore. Our final stop in the Surf Center is our second eating establishment here on campus called the Burgoo, named after a stew. The Burgoo is set up more like a store or a restaurant, unlike Dickinson Commons. Some of the students' favorite meals here are cheese sticks, chicken wraps, and Starbucks coffee drinks. While we walk over to the residential side, some students who live close may be wondering, commute or not? About 40% of our students here at Eureka are commuters, which means that all parking on campus is free for all students. Built in 2012, Arnold Hall is our newest residence facility here on Eureka College's campus. These are our most spacious rooms on campus, which is nice when sharing it with a roommate. Arnold Hall consists of five wings that each house upper class residents. Each wing has its own study lounge and larger social lounge with a TV. Every room on campus comes with a bed, chest, desk, 
bookcase, chair, and closet for each resident. Arnold houses two of the three sororities on campus. The rooms also include great ethernet access and high-speed Wi-Fi as well as geothermal heating and cooling. Arnold also includes a full kitchen and lots of additional lounge and study space, including a media room on the upper level that is perfect for group project work and has a printer free for student use. Behind me is Langston Hall, which is an upperclassman residence facility that offers suite style living. Langston is co-ed by suite and is set up with two single person rooms that share a toilet and shower in the middle but have their own sinks in their rooms. It is convenient for upper class students who would like to live in a quieter environment. Each floor in Langston has a large lounge area with a TV, study, and social space. The lobby area has a couple computers and a printer for student use. This is the Reagan Athletic Complex, dedicated to President Ronald Reagan and his older brother Neil, who also attended the college. Our gym is completely equipped with stadium chairs, which means every chair has a back. We are the only NCAA Division III school to have this luxury. Upstairs, a classroom, some event rooms, and many coaches' offices. The Bonatti Fitness Center is offered free to all students who would like to exercise using machines. Even commuter students have the access to this facility free of charge. Last in this building, our weight room, which is full of new equipment as of fall of 2019. Just outside the Reagan Athletic Complex, we have our football and soccer field, as well as our baseball and softball diamonds. The football and soccer field was converted into AstroTurf, and it also includes a Megatron. Here at Eureka College, we have many different athletic teams that compete throughout various times of the year. To my right is Founders Court, which is predominantly a freshman residence hall. Both of our freshman residence halls are set up to be limited occupancy so students can get to know each other and create a community value. Founders consists of four separate buildings that are all connected by stairwells. Darst, Deweese, Ford, and Myers. All of our residence halls have access to laundry areas that are free of charge for all students. Founders Court residents use Ben Major just next door for additional lounge space and a large laundry facility. We are now at Alumni Court, which also houses all incoming freshmen. These rooms are comfortably sized for two roommates. Be sure to check your packing list before you come to campus to see what items it is suggested that you bring and what items are not allowed on campus. Connecting both alumni residential buildings is our learning center, a great resource to use if you want help with writing or any course, or you could help here by becoming a tutor. The learning center is also a great place to study and is open 24 seven for student use. This is Ben Major, named after the man who owned all of the land that Eureka College now sits upon. This is a recreational building here on campus, which gives the students opportunities to chill out, play games, or even watch TV. To finalize our tour, behind me is Guns and Hauser Hall. It was built in 1929. It was extensively remodeled, but we strive to keep the 1920s look with the original wood floors, doors, and pedestal sinks. This concludes our tour here at Eureka College. For more information or a schedule of a tour, please visit us online. We hope to see you soon. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. A good citizen is someone who wants to make a positive impact, both in their communities and in the world around them. The Division III approach is absolutely the best approach out there for amateur sport because it wants student-athletes to explore all parts of who they are. Be successful in the classroom, be successful in competition, be successful in the community. So our student-athletes learn what it means to strive for and attain success, but doing it the right way and being good citizens. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. 
being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I want to be. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. 34-28. Halftime score as the teams prepare to retake the court. Spencer Davis, Kareem Burnett with you, Kareem. Red Devils on top here at halftime. A welcome sign to see you. Stat sheets in front of us. What jumps out to you the most? I mean, the most obvious stat that jumps out to me the most, we were talking about it beforehand, the offensive rebounding. They have 12 offensive rebounds to our five more. He has five offensive rebounds himself off the bench in only nine minutes of play. So we're definitely going to have to clean that up. You had a theory on, on, you know, why there's a difference between the offensive rebounds, if you want to touch on that. Oh, I just think that they're, they're sets on offense. I think they're overloading sides. And with the zone defense that the Red Devils are running, it's allowing for these guys to kind of slip unchecked straight into the, the paint. There's been times, though, where Carl Moore just gets position on people and moves them. So we'll see how they combat that. Again, the Red Devils are getting out-rebounded by 11 which is usually a pretty telling stat as to who's going to come out on top. We'll see what they've got as Becton turns around and makes a jump hook. Gets the scoring start in the second. Took early basket. I think our threes have kept us in this game, or else we would be down big with the level of offensive rebounding. The Red Devils took two free throws that entire half, which is by far the lowest that they have had and will have for the remainder of the season. Carter probably could have went up with that and gotten fouled, but elected to pass and turns it over. Yeah. Becton on the other end, four points already for him. Lead down to two. We don't see many guys attacking Cody Bear, you know, on the, on the defensive side of the basketball, but these guys have been going right at him. Kramer, another stat we highlighted. The Red Devils only had two turnovers in that first half, already with one here. Yeah, we want to make sure we keep playing a, a, a clean clean game. Don't want to get, keep getting those uncaused turnovers. Into the corner, Brown lets him fly by. Carter, open look from three. No good. DeJesus scrapping for it. He gets knocked out of his hands. Carter, one-handed tip pass. Now trying to split the trap and fouled. Well, good defense, though. Immediately, that's one of those instant traps that are so yeah. hard to try to get away from. You mentioned the turnovers on the Red Devils, and it just came across my mind. The two turnovers we had in the first half were within the first three minutes of play, so we went like... Almost a good 17, 18 minutes with no mistakes. So we were due. <laughs> it's all right. Johnson trying to shake Coleman. Corner with Carter. Bear down in the post. Jones took it away from him. Bear traveled. I think they pulled the tear on him on that one. 
Yeah, he thought he had him on a different hip for sure. You can tell he wanted to set him up to his left and spin back to his right. Yeah. If he's his back is at the basket, yeah, he's trying to go left and then <laughs> right. Just trying to make sure I'm saying that correctly. But Sykes, the second on the wing, down low, Beckton. Beckton with four points already in this half. Able to sneak a pass into the zone, and Brown picking it off. Even break, one-on-one, -on -one. Brown through some contact, and he finally gets a foul call. This is Pee Wee Brown's first trip to the line of the entire night. This is a guy, you know, he shot 11 free throws last game. We would call him a free throw merchant. Not really getting a lot of calls tonight. Gets rewarded on this take. Like we talked about the levels to his game. He's really tried to work on his free throws. So he gets that first one to go down. Yeah, we, we were you was you um brought it up earlier, his three point shooting when he made one earlier. I think just his jump shooting in general has improved since his freshman year at Lincoln. Significantly improved. I mean again, he's always been a guy that wants to get to the basket, but extending his his game to that three point arc has really made him a tough player to guard. Yeah. I heard Dwayne Wade said one time in an interview that he started off as a jump shooter, a mid-range jump shooter, and once he starts shooting and teams get up on him, that gives him room to blow by. Three-pointer up, Luster misses, and a good box out from DeJesus. We talked about it at the break, at least. Boxing out is such a little thing, but doing it is something that the Red Devils are going to have to do if they want to win. Yes, yeah, so you can win a game through pure boxing out, even if you don't get the rebounding. As you see Ben Carter almost lose it there in traffic. Stops the other guy from getting the board. Bear misses. DeJesus running that one down. Brown, deep three up from him. No. And Jones with a quick rebound and transition. Three on two. Jones pitches. Coleman lets it fly by and finishes through some contact. Coleman has had some tough, tough finishes over a lot of contact. Yeah, that also could have been a foul. Again, that's kind of been a storyline. A lot of contact near the basket. So if you're just tuning in, don't be too surprised. If you're not seeing as many foul calls, I stand corrected. <laughs> Cody Bear finishes through one. It look like the refs aren't holding their whistle as much in this second half. That's a call that would not have been made in the first half, it certainly feels like. I think we've seen identical plays on the opposite side of the basketball where Cody Bear went up with a play like that, and it was a no call. Maybe trying to change things up a little bit. No officials get to hang out with each other for those 15 minutes, too. They get to reflect on the half that they had, so maybe they elected to, hey, maybe we start calling it a little tighter down low, at least when guys are going to the hoop. Yeah, I was just talking about Jason Coleman with that tough finish on the other end. I brought up earlier, you know, he, he, he has the Derrick Rose free throw routine. Don't know if he's a fan or not, but his game would kind of, you know, perpetrate that he is a fan with the way he's attacking the basket. So with Sykes. Red Devils still in that 2-3 zone. Also to note, Carl Moore onto the court for Webster as well. He's lurking in that short corner. They've got DeJesus marked up on him to just box out. And there is that box out. I can't believe I'm gassing up a box out right now, but <laughs> here we are. Hey, underrated. Carter sizing up Moore, trying to get baseline. DeJesus open three from him. Yes, Sam DeJesus putting the Red Devils back up eight. Cash money. Again, you talked about it. Three-point shooting is the reason why the Red Devils are in front right now. And this is by far their best performance as a team from that line. Jones, herky-jerky, can't knock it into Hazus rebounds. That's our sixth three of the night. Uh, I think our highest in a game before this was maybe four. Bear trying to work on more, blocked by more. Quick outlet. They're going to be a two-on-two. -two. Luster, right finish there around Johnson. That was a good contest by Johnson, but... Luster was just much more taller. Johnson picks up his dribble. It's with Carter. Lead cut back down to six. Carter to Johnson. Nice ball fake. Eventually finds Brown eventually. Little redundant there. There's the shot from Brown. DeJesus offensive rebounds. Gets back out. I like what I've seen from DeJesus already in this second half. Brown double clutch layup. Doesn't get a call. I don't think there was as much. Yeah he would have needed on that clean defense to me three-pointer up from the lefty luster no good rebound there from Ben Carter and gets fouled by Moore you seen luster hit a quick three early in the first half but since then he's mixed missed six straight three-pointers they're gonna have Jalen Davis check in for him as well 
as you goes back onto the court. And he getting them up, they just not falling. You mentioned that um that miss layup on Pee Wee Brown as he kind of went in there and slithered in. Our coaches always told me like the more you move in the air, in the, air the less the refs are likely to call the foul. I have to keep an eye on that. You can see Bear trying to post up on Moore. Johnson to Bear. Out near that three-point line. Carter, 10 seconds on the shot clock. With Bear. Going to show off the dribble moves. Mid-range J from him. No. Rebounded by Hugo. Webster quick in transition. It's what they've been really trying to work their offense through. Hugo to Sykes. Around Bear and in. Sykes the first time he didn't go up when Cody Bear was there, but then he kind of repositioned himself, got Cody in the air a little bit, and he scored on him on that play. You can see Davis is trying to apply some pressure, force Pee Wee Brown to initiate the offense. You mentioned earlier, Jalen Johnson, four quick assists, Pee Wee drives in, doesn't really get anything on that, a lot of contact. You go. Back out. Back to this is something that Pee Wee Brown's going to have to notice. Even if he's not getting calls, he can't not hustle back. It's not his teammate's fault he's not getting a call. Yeah. I did want to let the ref know, but that play's already over. You can't go back and change it. Hugo trapped on that baseline, slung into the corner. Davis run off the line. Mid-range shot over Carter. Knocked in. Tough shot and finish. Yeah. Oh, cash. 42-40 now. Webster certainly had the better offensive half so far, and Coach Wilde going to take a timeout. His guy's still leading by two. 13, 27 to go here in Eureka. Slack matchup number two for the Red Devils. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So Yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Eureka in the midst of a timeout talking things through. They've seen their six-point lead from halftime get cut down to two. They've made some shots as well. But again, Webster putting up and winning this half so far. 12 to 8. So again, not something that you have to be crazy concerned about, but you definitely want to see that offense return to what it was in the first half. Yeah, you pointed out at halftime, and we're going to see him for the first time tonight. Noah Persis, he arrived, and he was shooting the warm-ups with the team at halftime, so maybe it was something going on with, you know, maybe he was taking the final or something like that. You don't really know. Some more might come out of that story, but he's suited in right now. So the Red Devils putting Dylan Logsdon back out on the court, giving DeJesus a break. Johnson able to keep it with him. Five on four if they want it. Carter, nice tip pass. Logsdon recovering. Johnson thought about a three. Goes to Bear instead. Persich. Persich probing back. Carter, three up. No. Bear tipping it out. Carter chasing it down. Gets tackled by Davis. So Dylan Logsdon lobs into Bear. Bear pauses and finishes. That sequence right there. It was. It was a crazy one to follow. A lot of passing, a lot of tip balls, but ended up in the Red Devils too. Hugo just putting his head down and going through. Bear and a bucket for him. I didn't even know that went in. Cody Bear unhappy with the lack of calls for himself. Yeah, I think he might have been fouled a little bit on the play before that. Lead cut back down to two. And Hugo trying to get it down to the lowest it's been since the beginning of the game and does so. Webster has not led in this game. And this is something I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at deeply. I want to see can the Red Devils win in these minutes while Pee Wee Brown is on the bench. Persich to Bear Johnson. Johnson yet to attempt a shot. Logsdon out, Carter. Trying to drive baseline, able to find Bear underneath. Bear runs into a wall. Somehow Webster comes up with it. Four on three. Bear erases that one, and Johnson recovers. Now it's a two on one for the Red Devils. Johnson on the left side. 
finds Logsdon, pauses, and finishes. Spencer, you pointed it out in the first half. Zaylen Johnson hasn't attempted a shot, but he's up to four or five assists. You can be effective in other ways besides scoring. Absolutely. Three-pointer up now from Davis. Can't get it. Johnson with another rebound. I like how you said that you don't have to score to be productive. Because Jalen Johnson racking up boards and assists like no other. And his defense. Bear kicks. Persich swings. Carter deep three up. Ben Carter can't knock that one down. Carter a hot first half. Slowed down a little bit. Flips back out from Sykes to Coleman. You go to Davis. Pass got red. Moore keeps it in bounds. Just getting volleyballed around out there. Tip pass. To the corner, Davis, another three-pointer up from him. Knocked in, and it's a tie game at 46. Davis, his second three-pointer of this, this half. I believe his third of the game. So, you know, he, he's matching Ben Carter three for three. Webster trying to get involved. First time it's been tied in quite some time. I think since the very beginning of the game. Carter looking to get the lead back up. Blocked on that take and knocks it out of bounds as well. I hear the Webster bench yelling air ball, but I believe one of their teammates tipped it. That's even more the reason to do it. <laughs> really get in their head. Alpha Diallo onto the court. Pee Wee Brown back on for the Red Devils. Under 11 minutes to go, 46-46. Second Slyak game of the year for the Red Devils. Dropped on the road against Blackburn on Saturday. Nice ball movement here from Webster. Backdoor cut from Diallo over Brown. Can't finish, logs and scrapping for it. Still on the glass, Bear. That's what I want that one in. Cody. Yeah, Cody with a strong rebound there. You can tell he's a little fired up. He's usually pretty stoic, but Certainly seems to be a little bit more aggressive than normal. Swings, logs in three-pointer from him. Yes! Red Devils back in front by three. Persich providing some press defense. Davis going to push this up the court. Floater up from him. Splash. Davis has come off this bench and been instant offense. He's up to, I believe, like 11 points on the night. Brown hammered and blocked. Excuse me, Jalen Davis up to 12 points off the bench tonight. He's hit three threes. He's, he's got a floater. And Diallo's provided some good minutes off the bench as well, as has Moore. Carter to inbound. Persich keeping that in bounds. Good tightrope act over there. 17 on the shot clock. Persich goes down a little globe trotters, gets tackled. His tires blew out. <laughs> Logs in tough take, loses it, and is fouled. Just a matter of time before he's going to get a call, I think. And I don't know if it's slippery on that floor or not, but I don't know how Noah Persis fell. Sometimes you just start moving too fast, and you get a bump from somebody you weren't expecting, or don't get a bump even. Catch a flat tire. Second trip to the free throw line for the Red Devils all night. Nate Jones and Becton back into the game. Hard, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is the third trip. Pee Wee Brown went earlier. Oh, yes, he did. Under 10 to go now. Red Devils in front by one. Missed shot there. Carter with an offensive rebound. Gets Jones up, and Red Devils going right back to the line. And the Webster coach, he's furious on the bench right now. I see him shaking his head, talking to his guys. That's one thing that coaches hate the most in the world, allowing an offensive rebound off of a free throw. There's a reason why they put four of your guys down there. You should be hitting the rebound. Yeah. Carter knocking in the first. 50-48, Red Devils. Again, trying to get back closer to 500. They're two and four on the year, and trying to get to 500 in the conference as well. Yeah. This has been one of the better Red Devils games in terms of offense. You know, Ben Carter, he's up to double digits tonight. Pee Wee Brown, double digits. Cody Bear, double digits. So, you know, we always talk about that third guy. And today, it was, it's been Ben Carter so far. Bear with another rebound. Persich into the corner for Logsdon. 
Logs and trying to get baseline on Davis. Cross court Carter. Persic do a little playmaking. Fadeaway shot from him rattles home. Ooh. No, a person's the type of guy that's got that Hall of Fame mid-range dead eye. He does. He stopped on a dime, set his feet. Forces a turnover as well. Persich gets hacked. And I think that's going to send them to the free throw line yeah. for a one and one. I was going to say, isn't that like a take foul almost? No, I know it's no take fouls in, um, in college, but. Coach Wilde saying he got hit in the face. I, I didn't see him get hit in the face. I thought he got upper yeah, he chest. Got, yeah, on arm. Also, 7-1 to one in terms of fouls. Webster with the most. Uh, we are I'm going to be honest. I think that we've probably given out more than one foul. As an expert on fouling others, <laughs> we definitely fouled them more than one time. Webster, you know, did have three less fouls than us at half, but now it's kind of swung in the completely different direction. Yeah. And usually you want to find that happy medium. Mm -hmm. medium. Maybe the ref kind of... Clean up some of the fouls from earlier. That's a good point. <laughs> 8.58, more back on. DeHazer's back on for the Red Devils, as well as Ray Banzamuna. It's going to be Cody Bear and Dylan Logsdon going to the bench. Got to think this is the last time Cody Bear gets a break for the night. Yeah, it's a seven-point game right now. We're getting closer and closer to that crunch time, so you know he's not going to miss out on any of those minutes. Diallo, three-pointer up from him, too strong. Good box out from Brown, but it's Moore coming down with it. But tough ass for Banzamuna to box out Moore. Gets hip-checked on his way out there to try to get to it. Moore, another rebound this time around to Jesus, and it gets hacked. Moore is up to seven offensive rebounds on the night. He's a force. He's out there looking like Charles Barkley. No, he's only listed as 6'4", but he's athletic and... He has long arms. I don't know what his wingspan is, but you can just tell when he go when he goes up. Him and Pee Wee Brown jumped, and they jumped about the same height, but his arms just kept going. Yeah, it looks like Moore's arms almost hang down by his knees. Man, helpful thing to have a wingspan as a shot blocker. Yep. Brown will collect that rebound. So an empty trip there from the free throw line, and the shot clock turned off at least on one side. It's back up now. Moore hasn't scored in this game, if I'm correct, but his footprint has been everywhere. He's up to nine rebounds on the night off the bench. Seven of them offensive, as I just mentioned. Whew. He's a tough, tough customer to deal with. Again, his scoring's been down from last year. He averaged a double-double for... for some reason it's just not going in for him as well this year. Brown gets blocked on that take. Banzamuna a little power dribble. He'll take a shot up and in. Banzamuna, we talked about, was a shooter coming into the year. He's demonstrating he can get to the bucket too. Yeah, I, I was. What did um, Shaq say? I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. I didn't know he had this much, you know, driving ability. Another guy that's really playing with confidence. We talk about it with Michaela Rosenberry playing with a lot of confidence. Another guy like Ray Banzamuna didn't get as much PT last year. In the minutes that he's playing, he looks super comfortable. And that just shows how much one summer can affect a guy. Coleman finishing over Persich. Coleman, stay in the lane. Lead down to seven for the Red Devils. Seven and a half to go. And Persich setting up the offense, able to evade a steal. De Jesus to Banzamuna. Coleman trying to guard him. Nine on the shot clock. Brown to Carter. A jab step from Carter. Nice footwork from him and a good finish. Great move. How, how many of our guys have we seen do a move like that tonight? Three? At Noah, least. Noah Persis a few minutes ago hit something very similar to that. No, Carter's a big Celtics guy. and That certainly looked like a Jason Tatum type move. I didn't know he was a, a Celtic guy. Oh, yeah. We've got that in common. Seven-point lead once again. Brown at the elbow. These are those minutes, Kareem, where it feels like if, as long as you can stay even without Cody Bear out there, you're going to be able to sail this one out. Brown, tough three-pointer up. Davis with a rebound. We have four-on-three break. Davis over Carter himself can't rebound by Banzamuna. 
I mean, these guys are definitely going to need some form of ice bath or something out of this game. Persic run off the line, gets around more, jump shot from him, no good. Rebounded by Brown. Brown gets tied up, hammered again, wrapped up, and he'll go to the basket. Oh I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> when he drive, did he not get barrel? <laughs> he, yeah, he did. He got grabbed across the peck is what it looked like. Oh, man, I get letting them play, but don't let them kill each other out there. It looked like a take foul. It did. Like the whole wrap up to try to stop him from going to the basket. Yeah, wow. You know what? Smarter people than us have it figured out, I guess. He got to the line anyway. Yeah, I was going to say one thing about Pee Wee Ryan Brown. He's going to find a way <laughs> to get to the free throw line. Whether it's off the dribble and the, just the free play or the free throw line. This is something our, our camera didn't just catch, but something small that I want to point out. Pee Wee Brown, after he shot his free throw, he went to about the volleyball line and took a breath. And I don't know if people know how important that is for a guy's free throw rhythm. Yeah, something just calming yourself down a little bit. I always tried to work one in. I was a bad free throw shooter, so it didn't really matter what I did up there. I could have shot it granny style with my eyes closed and <laughs> good of a chance to go in as the regular form. Three-pointer too strong there, but another offensive rebound. Sykes the second, can't finish, rebounded Persich. Big opportunity for the Red Devils now, pushing this back up into double digits perhaps. It's a major possession. Brown looking to extend it himself, gets hacked again, taken out of his hands. One-on-one, -on -one, Coleman and Banzamuna. Coleman, good finish there. And Coach Bunch bouncing off the bench to get a timeout. 531 left in the second half. 61-54. Red Devils on top. Timeout for them. Timeout for us on ACTV. That's the most. <laughs> I surrender. I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? On social media, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look for us by searching ECTV at Eureka College and WEUR at Eureka College. That way, you can stay up to date as we continue to roll out new content for TV and radio. Again, that's ECTV at Eureka College and WEUR at Eureka College. Do it right now before you forget so you won't be left out. 5.31 remaining in the second half of action. Spencer Davis, Kareem Burnett with you. Kareem, this has been as fun of a matchup as you can hope for. It, 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 it has on um, both sides of the basketball, defense and offense. It's been a super, super aggressive game. A lot of no calls, a lot of questionable calls. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something to monitor as we get later on in this. Also to note, Red Devils with two team fouls. So take that with what it is as well. To Webster's eight. Webster, again, any foul committed by them is going to be double bonus pretty soon. And the Red Devils are going to have to foul a lot if they want the Gorlocks to be in the bonus. Persich stops a couple of times, bounces it off the rim. More, another rebound. Under five now, seven-point lead for the Red Devils. Tough shot, rebounded by Pee Wee Brown. Seems like we haven't seen Beckton in this game in a while. Yeah, it seemed like they kind of pulled him off the court. We also haven't seen a lot of luster either. Yeah. Missed a few threes, and we haven't seen him since. Missed his last six, so. Got to go with the hot hands, I suppose. Yeah. Carter, nine on the shot clock, deep three up from him. Spins out to Jesus, almost cleaned up. It will be Eureka basketball with a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Jalen Johnson onto the court for Noah Persich. And Coach Willie going to take a timeout here. Kareem, we're going to stay here, 61-54. Red Devils were a little sloppy early on in the half, and it, it, it's not been as clean of a half as the first half, but turnover's still certainly under 10. Yeah, I, I'm really proud of the Red Devils tonight. Turnover, turnovers have something has, has been something we've stressed on both teams, the women and the men. They only had two turnovers in the first half in those first few minutes. They've been really, really tight with the ball, and I love seeing that. Leading scorers tonight, Cody Bear, 17 points, 
Followed by Ben Carter with 14. Pee Wee Brown adding 13 as well. On uh, Webster's side, That's right. Jason Coleman with 11. Or, yeah, 11. Go ahead. Just got an update on my phone, um, a bit NBA related. Luka Doncic just became the first player in history with a 29 point triple double at halftime. At halftime? At halftime. Woof. <laughs> They're playing nobody? 2K? And Johnson with a five second count is pretty much for that. The Utah Jazz. Yikes. It's a quick five seconds, and that's what Coach Wildey's kind of saying. Webster allowing for this to kind of roll up the floor. Work as much time off of it as possible. Red Devils been in that 2-3 zone almost exclusively today. You can see Carl Moore lurking underneath. Splash from three by Diallo. This is his first three-pointer tonight. He started off 0 for 4 from three. Four-point lead for the Red Devils. It's Bear at the elbow. Going to get past Moore. Goes back out. Johnson. Carter. Bear once again. Tough shot there. Spins it home. Cody Bear came into this one averaging 20 and a half points. And that's knocked out from Coleman. Webster bent asking for a foul. I wish I could offer an opinion. I really couldn't see. Me neither. Brown baited that pass all the way. Picks it off. Johnson now on the wing. He'll rise and fire from three. No, an offensive rebound for Brown. Pass gets tipped and Moore comes up with it. Quickly up the sideline. Sykes, nice catch from Moore. Some long arms you're talking about. Diallo going to clear out once again. Reset. Becton, mid-range shot, good. I think this is the highest diet of mid-range shots that I've seen from two offenses. Literally, I've seen it's probably we're probably up to double digits in, in mid-range jump shots made tonight. Or at least we're close to it. Red Devils lead down to four. It's Bear going to Johnson, able to keep it in bounds, having to Jesus. Jesus flinging it back out. 11 on the shot clock. Brown trying to go baseline. Kicks back out. Bear gets shoulder checked, and that will be a foul on the ground. Be one and one free throws. And the bonus, so every foul counts. 2.52 left. I think this is Cody Bear's first trip to the free throw line. He's another one of those free throw merchants that we love. Well, we always bring it up. He shot 80% from the free throw line last year, so as a big, don't really have to worry about him missing. First one goes down for Bear. Yeah, he shot 80% last year, and he's shooting 89 this year. I fully expect him to miss this next one now that we brought it up. <laughs> 2.52 remaining in the second half. Five-point lead for the Red Devils. Make it six. It's Cody Bear up to 21 points tonight. Diallo trying to let this one roll for a little bit. Clock restarted. It's Coleman, Diallo, Sykes. Back up top. Struggling to find an opening until they want it to go into the middle, and they're able to get it to Becton. Floater up from him. Bounces around and in. Becton up to 13 tonight. He's been balling. Johnson will walk this one up. Four point lead for the Red Devils again. Bear at the elbow, more harassing him. Carter to Brown. Eight on the shot clock. Johnson looking to dance. Carter. To Jesus in the mid-range. Jump shot from him. Banks in from the elbow. We were just talking about those mid-range jump shots tonight. Banking in from the elbow is not what you see every day. That was a bit of a strange tactic from Webster letting the ball roll and it's burning the clock and they're down. Yeah, the shot, the clock doesn't stop until, what, inside of a minute, I believe, after made yeah. shots. Good rebound from Pee Wee Brown and a chance for the Red Devils to put this game on ice. Six point lead for Eureka. And Coach Wildy will take a timeout, talk things over. Minute 31 left in the second half. Eureka up 67 61 on ECTV.
affects all corners uh, of the world for good. I mean, if you think about organizations that affect an entire world, it's a short list. Taking care of kids, kids is a priority. Taking care of the families as whole. Without donations, without people that care for St. Jude and for the kids mm -hmm. in St. Jude, our max wouldn't be here. You are making a difference, not just in a hospital, but in an entire world. Take ECTV with you wherever you go. ECTV now available on the all-new EC Connect app. Download the app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. Once you open it, you can click on ECTV to watch us on your smartphone. You can also find our sister station, WEUR. Download the all-new EC Connect app right now. Six-point lead in front of the home crowd. Minute change left. Kareem... Big possession for the Red Devils upcoming. This is a huge possession. A bucket here, especially a three, could almost put this game away if you get a bucket and a stop. So this is one of the more important possessions of the entire night. Could be a situation where we see that lob play drawn up for Ben Carter, where he sneaks out. Johnson. Using the screen from Bear. Bear left alone. He'll just dribble around for a second. Brown, 10 on the shot clock. Hand off Carter. Carter trying to shake his man Beckton. Five on the shot clock. Carter well defended. De Jesus to Brown. Brown three pointer up high, arcing off the rim. It's Diallo coming up with a rebound. Gotta get a stop now. Minute five left. Coleman. Beckton. We're gonna drive back outside. Jump stop off of Moore and Bear recovers it. Now this is the real, the next biggest possession of the game. <laughs> Every possession counts. See what the Red Devils can do on this one. 45 seconds left. Well, a hush silence in here. Brown with 11 on the shot clock. Looking to just dribble this out for a second. Brown, Carter, blocked from three. Recovers, four on the shot clock. Bear will have to put one up. Bear from the mid-range, Iceman! The 69 61 with 23 seconds left. The shot clock was doing something funky. I Taking a moment to c correct that. I think Cody Bear might have just made the bear here. Now Wester got to lay in it. Put these guys to rest. 24.9 left. Eureka extending their zone out just a little bit to force the pickup. Needing to overcome eight points. Don't want to foul. All the way to the bucket. Missed time his jump. Ball on the ground. Moore and De Jesus with a foul. The way that today's gone, Carl Moore not the worst guy to foul right now. Moore scoreless. We don't have live stats in front of us, but certainly in double digit rebounds. Especially after that last play. And that one spins out as well. Might even implement a little hackamore here. I think he's 0 for 3 on the night from the free throw line. I think DeJesus has four fouls and all of them are against Moore. <laughs> so using them well and using them wisely. And Moore missed both free throws on that. 69-61. So I think that kind of just sealed the deal there. Yeah, I wish... We gotta talk about that, that mid-range jump shot from Cody there. It was a tough one. You just spoke on how many mid-range jump shots have been made tonight. Cody Bear kind of just put the icing on the cake with that little fadeaway. What was that, about a 15-footer? Yeah, it shot up from about the elbow. But again, Ben Carter getting blocked on that three-point attempt and Cody Bear realizing, I think a little bit quicker than what he expected. He caught the ball and then it registered with him. Well, I, I gotta put something up. <laughs> you know, him being 6'10 helps to just rise over his defender. I'd like to be 6'10 for a day just to see what the difference is. Have you ever, you've seen those videos where they have like Wimby Yama carry yeah. his phone out in front? That's what like 7'6 is like? I wow. 6'10 for a day. I, I would spend at least two hours in the gym just dunking. Yeah, easily. I think I would do that if I was 6'5 to be honest. For real. Johnson able to evade a couple guys and get fouled eventually. Burn a couple extra seconds off Eureka and the double bonus. 
I'm just going to ask you how many more fouls into the double bonus, but the basketball guys have spoken. Well-balanced team performance tonight. It was. Been... Huey Brown, the rare occasion he's not the leading or second leading scorer tonight. Again, if this holds, Ben Carter will have 14, and that'll be good for second. And we've been preaching that, that third guy for a few weeks now, and Ben Carter must have heard or, you know, he just, tonight was his night. Offensively and defensively, he was able to knock down three threes. He's just been everywhere in this ball game. And I may be wrong on this stat, but I think this might be the first game where everybody in the starting lineup has scored. Coleman expecting contact, didn't get it, still finishes. Bear launches one down. Brown will walk it in. Thought about it, Duncan just decides not to. Smart play there. I was ready for it. <laughs> Probably would have uh, started the next matchup between these two guys a little bit angrier if that had uh, went down. But Eureka taking this one at home, 70-63. to 63. Kareem, as good of a night as you can have. As great as a night of, as you can have. And, you know, we were talking about it beforehand, you know, about the third option guy or, you know, the team getting involved. No, no Cody Bear, no Pee Wee Brown. And Ben Carter really showed up. And not just Ben Carter, our whole team, you know, Noah, Bu Noah Persis, he has some tough buckets. We've seen Banza Muna, he come in and get some, some buckets. So this is a great, great team performance. And that's all we have for you from here tonight in Eureka. Red Devil men moving to three and four on the season, one and one in the conference. Webster falling to two and six and one and two in the conference. Our next broadcast of Eureka College Basketball will be on Saturday, December 9th, when the Red Devil men and women travel to Spalding. Tip-off time set for like 12 and one o'clock. Imagine that'll be changed a little bit. Usually it's about one and three. We'll keep you posted on our social medias. Be sure to search those up. It'll be on WEUR. But for tonight, that's all we have. And on behalf of our entire crew, my broadcast partner, Kareem Burnett, this is Spencer Davis. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening.